Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Aysana, and today we'll go through my application to Duke Kunshan University. Um, don't hesitate to ask questions. We will reflect together. So let's get started. Um, actually, I was admitted to Duke Kunshan University uh, in March uh, with full tuition scholarship, as you can see. Um, yes. And let me tell about the Duke Kunshan University some statistics, maybe. Um, so the student body of Duke Kunshan University, um, all students, they come from all over 40 countries. So as you see that, um, as you see the student body is really diverse. Uh, also one of the main criteria for what I look while choosing the university was the employability of graduate students. That's why I checked that uh, and I found that 90% of uh, graduate students of Duke Kunshan University, uh, they receive uh, at least one full-time job offer in six months of graduation. This was a really great for me, and this is one of the key factors to which I looked. Uh, also about the acceptance rate. Um, actually, admission uh, to Duke Kunshan University is a bit rigorous. Uh, it's competitive. Uh, and in March 2018, as you can see, uh, there were uh, nearly 8% uh, of acceptance rate. Uh, but in March 2018, um, 2019, the acceptance rate was nearly 20%, uh, as you can see. Um, now I want you to introduce the class of 2023 profile. This is um, also to what you need to look while applying to university because you will see uh, average SAT, acceptance rate and so on. Um, I already told you the acceptance rate actually. Uh, 3,155 3, applicants applied and only 670 of them were accepted. Um, 20, all applied students, they came from 20, 28 countries. Uh, again, diversity is one of the qualities that Duke Kunshan University tries to, um, tries to um, develop. And uh, as you see, average SAT is, between, is in range of between uh, 1,410. And as a maximum, um, the class of 2023, they got 1,530. And if you are worried about scholarship or financial aid, I can say that 80% of international students, they got uh, at least, um, they got scholarship or financial aid. Some of them got full scholarship and so on. Um, okay, why do Kunshan University? This is a key question that you need to state to you before applying to the university. Why this university? Why? And uh, I, my, for myself, uh, I took four aspects uh, while I chose Duke Kunshan University, and we'll stop on each aspect. Uh, as you know, okay, first question, why Duke Kunshan University was really creative? Uh, you know that Duke Kunshan University, it is, um, it's an American, uh, it's an American, um, Chinese American partnership of um, Duke University with Wuhan University. And because the Duke University wanted to, to feed, wanted to feed uh, to global changes, to recent global changes in education in 21st century, they uh, came to the they came to the decision that they need to create Duke Kunshan University, and that's why we can say that Duke Kunshan University is the innovative university. And in order to construct Duke Kunshan University, uh, it ex um, many of the ex best parts of many well-known universities were extracted. Uh, for example, there were um, Duke Kunshan, before constructing the Duke Kunshan University, uh, the, it went through so many uh, well-known universities such as NYU Shanghai University, Minerva University, Yale NUS University, um, Fudan University, Wuhan University. All these universities, they gave their open, they uh, gave their open source codes to Duke Kunshan University so that they extracted from each university their best parts. That's why we can say that Duke Kunshan University, in this case, it has more, it steps with the time, uh, it has more innovative curriculum, uh, and it offers you uh, two degrees. For example, um, while studying at Duke Kunshan University, you get Duke Kunshan University and you get Duke University degree. This is really great. Um, and second, uh, I want to talk about rooted globalism. This is um, the distinguish, this is what distinguishes a Duke Kunshan University from other universities. I really tell that. I think that this is uh, what makes DKU unique uh, because Duke Kunshan University, it offers uh, local, national, global levels of education. Uh, for example, the 
education that that actually before this time, before uh, before the past 12 years, uh, before this time, all universities, they served for a nation. But education that serves for a nation, it misses the global period, period at which we're living now. And uh, education that's only for the world, it misses nation, nation's needs, nation's culture. And studying at Duke Chan University, it means that you can make impact on both local, national, global levels. It's all about how you, uh, how they blended Western, uh, Western uh, education with Eastern, with Eastern culture. That you study in China, but you get American education. So this is the unique uh, aspect aspect of Duke and China University. Uh, they also have wide research platform. I mean that uh, the partnership with Duke with Duke University, with Wuhan University, uh, with universities in USA and Europe. Uh, they, uh, Duke and Chan University, by, uh, by collaborating with these universities, they created a wide research platform. And this is how they can make an impact on global, on national and local level. Uh, third reason uh, why I think why Duke and Chan University, it's all about interdisciplinary curriculum. Uh, university doesn't require from you to be um, to be a professional in one field. You can get uh, you can get knowledge uh, from both uh, from different subjects at the same time. And this is really what distinguishes Duke and Chan University too. Um, you don't have only biology. You have biochemistry, or you have integrated uh, or applied sciences uh, instead of uh, just the physics, instead of just chemistry, and so on. And you can actually use this. Uh, interdis your knowledge from interdisciplinary curriculum in different research centers. There are many research centers at Duke Chan University, such as Humanities Research Center, um, Applied Physics Research Center, a Global Health Research Center, Environmental Research Center, and so on. And the first, fourth, and last aspect that I want to tell is the personalized education. Small class sizes, um, no Friday classes actually in Duke Chan University. Uh, in Fridays they have trips. In Fridays they can have some hands-on experience, but no Friday classes actually. Uh, also, uh, the schedule of um, studying is a bit different. Uh, they have two courses. They have two courses for seven weeks. Uh, while uh, in other universities, you study four classes for 14 weeks. So you see that you have a time to deepen into different fields, uh, to different fields of uh, knowledge. Uh, and this is, I, I think that it's really good. There are also mini, ter mini term courses uh, that make learning fun. Learning must, must be always, uh, must be also fun actually. And for example, they have mini term courses about fermentation, um, about subway life in China. So um, there are seven mini, mini term courses. Uh, they are short and you can choose at least one of them. So um, this, what, this is what also distinguishes uh, Duke's, uh, Duke Kunshan University's uh, education. Uh, and signature work, I need to tell about this because um, I actually included uh, signature work in my uh, university specific essay. So signature work uh, is actually a research, research project that needs to be done at the fourth, uh, at fourth year of education, at fourth years of studying. And this is how you can uh, personalize your education or how you can stem your interest, uh, how you can stem your interest by doing research in DKU. Um, but there are some also aspects that you need to know, uh, that you need to consider. Because the university is new, curriculum is under the development. And as, and as I know, um, integrated sciences or applied sciences, yes, applied sciences, uh, this, um, this major is under the development. Also, uh, I know that there is no computer science, but uh, there is instead data science, yes. There is instead data science, which includes some computation. Uh, also, there are no double major options, but as we have interdisciplinary curriculum, I think that uh, there is no need maybe in double major options. Also, there are no full ride scholarships. Uh, you get uh, as a maximum grant a full tuition scholarship, uh, which is approximately $56,000. And this is what I got. Um, and it's harder to cover credits for Duke degree. As I stated before, uh, you get Duke Kunshan University degree and Duke uh, degree. And uh, for the Duke degree, it's harder to cover these credits um, unless um, it's easier to cover credits at Duke University rather than uh, in Duke Kunshan University. I guess you understand it. 
uh, and also about the student body. Uh, so student body ratio is actually seven, seven, seven to three, 70 to 30. Uh, it means that 70% uh, of all students are Chinese students and 30% of all students are uh, international students. But university actually tries to, um, to come to a ratio of 50 to 50, as I know. Uh, and, but from my point of view, it's really great um, if you want to immerse yourself in the Chinese environment. And it's really great opportunity um, to be proficient, not only in English, but only in, in Chinese language as you graduate uh, from Duke and Chinese University. So uh, let's start, um, let's come to Common App. Uh, I, I think that you know that Common App is a platform where you submit uh, all your documents, uh, all your information to, the, to USA universities. And application deadlines for uh, early decision, uh, application deadline for Duke Kunshan University is October 30, 31st, you, if you see. And regular uh, decision is uh, January 2nd. Uh, and also some common app application checklists are included uh, and you can see that you need to send your school report. Um, also school report, yes, uh, consular recommendation and two teacher recommendations. Uh, I submitted from my point of view from biology teacher and from chemistry teacher because I wanted to apply to molecular bioscience program. But you choose your uh, major by the end of second year, uh, as in all, as in most of USA universities. So that's why don't worry. Um, you need to submit high school transcripts. And um, actually, Duke Chan University it doesn't have a flexible testing policy. You need to submit SAT reasoning or SAT or ACT. Um, I personally submitted SAT reasoning. Uh, there is no need to submit SAT uh, first or SAT um, in SAT second, I mean SAT in physics, SAT subject. Yeah, I mean SAT subject. There is no need to submit SAT subject actually. Um, then you need to submit your personal essay. Also, there are no boundaries, uh, no minimum scores for SAT reasoning. Uh, you can submit a uh, score that you want. Uh, you have personal essay and you have DKU specific essays such as why do you think uh, Duke Kunshan University is a good match for you? What special qualities uh, do you you can bring to the Duke Kunshan University? This is required. Uh, and I um, wrote this essay and I passed it. And um, the second essay is: Is there anything else you would like to um, you like to tell about yourself? And this is an optional essay, and I didn't uh, submit it. And I didn't submit it. But actually, if you have some such optional optional essays, if you have space in Common App where you can feel, where you can write about yourself, always write. It will be a great plus. It will be a great advantage if you write about yourself, uh, if you will share about yourself more. And if you want to apply to financial aid, you need to, um, you need to, um, you need to submit CSS profile, what I did. And actually admission, from my point of view, admission looks for candidates, for such candidates uh, who, can, who, who um, can bring diversity, who can make an impact uh, on local levels, at least, yeah. Uh, and those who have uh, good academic um, achievements. This is what I think. Uh, and as you see, I um, highlighted, uh, the, um, highlighted the four statements. An adventurous spirit and global orientation, yes. I think um, that university makes an emphasis on this and try to make an emphasis on your application while applying to this university. Uh, you can see some other uh, aspects that I wrote, strong English language proficiency, uh, leadership opportunity, uh, impact in campus and community, as I said, and interest in interdisciplinary uh, liberal arts curriculum, yes. Mm -hmm. And let's start. Uh, let's start from uh, my academic Aisana, results. Uh, uh -huh. do you want to take a break? So, um, yeah. you the questions about the university, and then we will move on. Uh, okay. So, um, unblock chat, guys. Please, if you have any questions regarding the university, uh, maybe some requirements or um, any information that Dana gave you. Uh, please make sure you send those questions to the chat.
What about IELTS? What is about that? My IELTS, yes. Uh, or do we need, sorry, I can't see chat. Where is it? Um, you should click on participants and there uh, like chat will come uh, up. What is okay. about IELTS? Um, by Zulaiva, please, when you ask questions, make sure that uh, your question, questions are clear. Uh, do you mean IELTS like a requirement for the university or IELTS of Aisana? Let's take another question. Is this university need blind or need aware? Uh, it is need aware, actually need aware, need aware university. It gives, if you have some financial problems and uh, it gives most of the time full uh, tuition scholarships. Okay, um, she's asking about, um, one student is asking about uh, IELTS requirement of the university. Uh, uh, uh -huh. uh, you need to, yes, you need to submit IELTS uh, scores. I submitted personally IELTS scores. Uh, and if you didn't, uh, if you don't, if you're a school, if you are not a native uh, English speaker, then you need to submit IELTS. And I personally submitted. I think it should be like IELTS or TOEFL or probably yes. Duolingo test. IELTS, like, uh, I guess IELTS and TOEFL. I don't remember whether there is a Duolingo test. Uh, with um, the COVID, it can be Duolingo. About extracurricular activities, Norbeck, again, mm -hmm. please be clear. Um, if it's question about uh, Aisana's extracurricular activities, then she will go through them really soon. Um, right now, we're kind of like having this break for questions uh, that you can ask about the university, about the requirements of the university, and uh, maybe why Aisana decided to apply there. If you have no questions, we can just move on. Let's just wait a minute and see if we have any questions. If not, then we will just move on. Is essay in SAT required? Is, is, yes, yes, SAT is required. Um, no, SAT essay. SAT? Essay. SAT essay. Ah, uh, no, SAT, uh, SAT essay is optional. Uh, you can pass it or not. I, uh, I personally pass the SAT essay. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys. Any other questions? It looks like we're ready to move on. Let me just um, block the chat once again, and we will just go to the second part. Okay. So um, let's start from my academic results. What I passed actually, uh, you can see, uh, actually uh, I'm from Nazarbayev School um, School of Astana, and um, I studied International Baccalaureate Program. And you see that uh, I took for high level in our uh, in International Baccalaureate, uh, in, in this program, we have subjects for high level and for standard level. And for high level, uh, I took biology, chemistry, and English B language. And for standard level, I took math, mathematics, um, social and cultural anthropology, and Kazakh uh, A literature and language. Also, um, as a common courses that all uh, students need to take, need to uh, take, we had TOK, theory of knowledge, which is like philosophy. Uh, we also had Russian language, uh, military training in eleventh grade, um, Kazakh uh, history of Kazakhstan. Uh, also, all students need to work on extended essay. Extended essay is an essay for four four thousand words, and you need to um, write an essay uh, for a year you have a time to write an essay for a year and you need to uh, engage in some in some kind of issue. Uh, you need to solve that. Uh, and we also have CAS, Creativity, Creativity Activity Service, where we um, make, an, make a project that involves uh, our creativity that can work well for community and that will, uh, and, and projects uh, where we will engage with some physical activities. Um, so actually, I recommend while writing your year while writing your year courses, write all your all your year courses. 
for example, in IB, we had six main courses, but still I wrote all your courses that I had from, mil I even wrote military training. So that's why I write all the things that you did. Also, um, uh, coming up to my GPA, I had 4.8 uh, out of five. And uh, in GPA, you need to, in GPA and both in rank, you need to write weighted. Uh, and also um, in rank, you write, uh, as you see, there is um, 123. This is a number of uh, people who are studying, who have studied in our cohort. Uh, and you need to mention how many uh, people uh, are in your cohort. And you need to write uh, your rank, your ranking. For example, um, I had a top top ten percent, and yes. Also, uh, in Common App, you have such section as colleges and universities. Uh, in colleges and universities, you need to write those universities at which you had maybe some practical experience, maybe where you studied for some time, or maybe where you had summer science programs. And I wrote two universities. Uh, first one is Nazarbayev University where I had summer program uh, during the um, 10th grade and Waseda University uh, where uh, it is in Tokyo. Uh, it's in Tokyo in Japan um, where I had also summer program uh, during the 11th grade. And I mentioned uh, all these universities. Mm, and talking about my testing, uh, I took SAT. I actually took both SAT reasoning and SAT subject but I didn't mention about SAT subject because uh, I found that um, SAT subject is not required uh, and also that my scores are not that good uh, to, um, to submit the SAT subject. Uh, and as you see, my total SAT, um, it was 1,440 1, out of uh, 1,600. Um, and you can see that evidence-based reading and writing is 650 out of 800. And mathematics section is 790 out of 800 and essay is 70 points out of 24 but essay is optional for Duke Kunshan University you can uh, just not write it if you want uh, and uh, below that you see IB subject tests these are my predicted grades actually um, predicted grades uh, I mean uh, these are grades that were uh, where I didn't pass tests but uh, my my teachers they predicted that I will get these grades uh, from biology, uh, seven out of seven, uh, chemistry, six out of six, and you will see further. So we have a grading scale out of seven. Uh, also in case of my IELTS, um, I got overall 7.5. Uh, listening and reading, uh, they are 8.5. Writing is six and speaking is seven. Um, so these are actually my stats, as you can see. Um, and we also, uh, while um, passing, we also, I also passed school report, as you know, um, and school report, uh, we, uh, and because uh, I studied in IB, we had, uh, uh, we need to, we, yeah, we needed to pass our predicted grades and I had 39 out of 43, 39 out of 43, yes. Um, this is good, I guess. Um, Maybe some questions or, okay, uh, let's move to my honors that I wrote uh, in my common app. So honors, uh, they must be, um, they can be in different levels. Uh, they have three levels, I guess. Yes, school level, national level, and international level. Uh, and, you need, and you can write first, uh, you can prioritize them. First write internationals, then nationals and schools. So it's your, up to you actually. Mm. So my first one was granted a full ride scholarship for science summer program at Waseda University in Japan. Uh, let's stop on this. Well, uh, from our school, um, five students, I guess five students, they were chosen. Um, they were chosen from whole cohort to have a summer science program at Waseda University in Japan. And actually Waseda University is a really good university uh, in Japan, so it's well known. Uh, and uh, we had uh, we had a full ride scholarship for the science summer program, and during the science summer program, we had different lab experiments. We uh, had um, different kind of. We uh, I also got acquainted with Chinese with Japanese culture uh, and so on. And you see that um, I also mentioned that this is this was an international level because um, we went 
to Japan and from Kazakhstan, only five students, uh, they went to this, um, to this summer science program. Uh, and also, you need to consider that while writing, while writing honors, you have limited space. You have only, I don't know how many, 150 characters, I guess, uh, if I remember it. Then you need to write every word specific like be specific and write um, and write and show that you did something. Like in honors, you need to show that you did something, that you uh, did really good something. So that's why I use the space and write it. And my second honors, it was honor medals in history, science and literature, silver medal in team writing at World Scholars Cup. If you are uh, in ninth grade, uh, in tenth grade, um, then now it's your time. You can you can uh, also um, go to the, this con to go to this World Scholars Cup. It actually costs, I guess, f uh, when I um, when I applied for this um, for this uh, World for the World Scholars Cup, it was um, a competition, not competition. Uh, it was um, event. It's an event, and you need to pay two, uh, twenty thousand uh, tinge. And I really uh, recommend you uh, to go to this conquest uh, to get some places uh, to just uh, to be a part, to take a part in this. It's a good chance. It's a good um, it's a good opportunity, and uh, it's good to write about this in your common app. So uh, you can get some different medals, and you can write it in this common app, as you see. And World Scholars Cup, it's also in international level, actually, because this conquest is actually well known, well known in the world. Then I also mentioned uh, about the silver medal in research project on the history of Kazakhstan. Uh, well, it was at the national level in ninth grade, as you see. Uh, and I think that this was a good point uh, for Duke Kunshan University because, as I said before, they are looking for diversity. So you, you um, by stating this uh, kind of activity or this kind of honors, you, uh, you see that I want to bring something from the Kazakhstan, that I know the history of Kazakhstan and being uh, as a prospective student, I can uh, bring uh, the history of Kazakhstan, I can bring some diversity to the student body. That's why um, it's also good. So um, in a national level, uh, I got silver medal. Uh, then uh, at school level, I mentioned one honor, which is bronze medal at Wonder Elective Courses under the category Android Light. Uh, actually, uh, I know that um, it was yes on the school level. School uh, school launched um, school uh, school said that we will have Wonder Elective Courses, and they asked us uh, to participate in it participate in it, uh, and I participated and got a bronze medal. You can also mention yes. Um, some some such kind of some school level uh, school level achievements and so on, and my last uh, honor it was the pre presidential Orkin full ride grant to study at Nazarbayev Intellectual School IB. Well, actually it was um, full ride grant to study at Nazarbayev Intellectual uh, School from seventh grade. But as we but as we know honors um, they are they are considered to be honors from ninth grade. That uh, things that you have done. Um, starting from the ninth grade. That's why I mentioned uh, starting from ninth grade uh, to 12th grade. And uh, this is, yes, and this is was also on the national level because uh, I guess um, the, all the applicants uh, to the Nazarbayev Intellectual School, uh, they, were, they came from different cities, they came from different regions, and yes. Um, if you have questions about owners or we can move. Um, let's just stop right here. Mm -hmm. and let's just um, kind of like let people ask questions. How did you apply to different summer programs? Well, uh, about summer programs, this was because of my school. Um, actually, I didn't apply to summer programs by myself, both to Nazarbayev University and to Waseda University in Japan. My school sent me. And uh, this is, yeah. And uh, I don't know how to apply to other summer science programs. Actually, I know one thing. I know that you can have an internship in Nazarbayev University. Uh, if you ask some professors uh, or some, uh, yes, if you ask professors or uh, lab 
lab assistants, I guess that they can uh, help you, they can help you to have uh, some kind of, uh, to make some researches in Nazarbayev University during the summer. Um, and you can write about this in, co in your common app actually. But I didn't do like this. Mm -hmm. Guys, do we have any questions? Because it's really important to uh, fill out others. Like this section is uh, one of the main sections where you're showing your academic standing. And uh, you kind of like showing that you will be able to study, you will be able to graduate. Like you're ready. And actually um, look for, if you are looking for some kind of, um, some kind of uh, Olympiads, then go through internet. Like, you can have online and Olympiads. Um, they can be, uh, yes, go through internet and look for online Olympiads at least so, so that you can write them uh, as your owner and so mm -hmm. on. That's a good thing. And uh, next week, we're actually going to have a meeting with a girl. Her name is Kibyanur. Um, she's still in high school, but uh, this year she applied to like several different um, international programs uh, and she actually won all of them and she can really tell you how she was looking for those programs and how she was applying and we have a question how were your scores how were your IB scores converted in GPA in GPA uh, I think GPA you don't convert. I, oh you don't convert you just uh, state yes. that have IB program and you just show your scores, right? Uh, I went to um, to school counselor and he actually converted my um, IB scores to GPA, I guess. I didn't convert myself, I just asked. It. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, school doesn't support IB classes or IP, what should I do in this case? Um, I can answer this question. If you doesn't have IB or AP classes, you just show your uh, school curriculum. Um, and most US universities, they take into account uh, the context where you come from. So if you your school doesn't offer any um, AP classes or your school doesn't offer any electives, that's okay. It's not a, it's, it should, it will never be a disadvantage for you. If you pass SAT with essay, you don't have to send the score for essay if it's not required, right? Do you remember that, Aysana? Mm -hmm. Also um, about GPA, um, I understand, GPA is actually calculated from ninth grade from ninth to 11th grade to 12th grade. And if you are in ninth grade, then it's time to work. <laughs> so your GPA. from ninth yeah. grade, yes. So, so that your previous, all your previous marks are all calculated together. Um, have you like, um, do, you, you, do you remember if you had to uh, submit your SAT essay score, even though uh, Duke Kunshan doesn't require it? but you actually took it. Yes, I submitted my SAT essay score. Okay. Um, you passed GPA of recent three years, including last. Okay, for example, if you apply in 12th grade, I should submit GPA of 12, 11, 10. Yeah, uh, you, yes. uh, you submit for, um, for the like past, almost four years, so 9, 10, 11 uh, this year's and plus uh, your 12th grade. Yes, GPA and actually while submitting school transcripts, uh, I submitted starting from ninth grade again. Yeah. Uh, all marks for ninth grade, all marks for 10th, 11th, 12th grade. And GPA is actually when you combine all these grades together and it comes out like as one number. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you have only 11 years in school, guys, then you start from your eighth grade, okay? So it's eight, nine, 10, 11. Okay, I think we can move on to um, another section. Okay. 
Well, um, let's talk about activities. Um, actually, uh, I mentioned um, again, I mentioned uh, this, uh, my summer science programs is three times, uh, as I said before, in colleges and universities, uh, in, in a section called colleges and universities, in honors I mentioned uh, about uh, the Wasteda University in Japan. Uh, and also um, I mentioned again in activities. Um, actually, I don't know, is it good? But I mentioned them because they were important for me. And as you see, uh, first one is honors members of Sakura Science Club. Um, I, so Sakura Science Club, uh, while, while we went to Wasadi University, we actually cooperated with Sakura, with Sakura Science Club. And Sakura Science Club, they prepared all this, um, they prepared all this trip, they prepared all this program. And uh, by the end of the trip, I become uh, a member of this Sakura Science Club. Uh, and uh, I received the certificate uh, and in Japan I also conducted lab experiments as you can see. We visited different, actually different uh, museums, um, corporations, but I mentioned uh, Chiyoda Technical Corporation because this corporation uh, is well known in Japan and um, it's a good corporation, that's why I mentioned it. Um, and actually uh, as a tip I can say that um, okay, I will uh, tell it later. Um, also, um, as a second uh, activity, I mentioned that I was student at Nazarbayev University's lectures, and uh, I wrote that I was honored for a summer research program. It was in 10th grade, and uh, we had various lectures, various lab uh, experiments, hands-on experience um, in different fields such as biomedic biomedical sciences, engineering. Uh, I wrote also what, what kind of certificate I received. So it was certificate of excellence again. Actually, it's bad in activities to write, uh, for example, um, for example, you see that uh, in the second photo, you see that robotics, I wrote participant. So don't write in your activities the word participant. Um, it's not that good actually, but I wrote it. Uh, and I understand that this, is, this was my mistake. Um, also that in activities, uh, you need to show that uh, use more verbs. Use uh, what you uh, describe what you did. Don't say that you were participant. That you that you just participant. It sounds like you just participated. You didn't do anything and just um, yeah. That's why I try to use some verbs um, and use the space really um, uh, use the space wisely. Um, yeah, that's what that's what I suggest. Um, and also, um, I wrote about the, uh, and my third activity it was biology representative. It was a project on my school level, and I wrote that my team used robotics, chemistry, and biology to make a paper from fallen leaves to contribute to recycling. Uh, we also made robots to sort leaves. So this, this was um, a school level project, actually. And I wrote about, uh, and I wrote about it. Uh, actually, while writing your activities, you need to prioritize again them, starting from important one, or going to the less, to the, um, to the, sh to the smaller project. Uh, and this was a good school project. Uh, and this was um, actually um, group four project uh, about about what I talked uh, in my YDKU universe, YDKU specific. Um, essay. Um, then also I wrote about journalism. Uh, I was a staff writer uh, in IBZ school journal. Uh, I wrote, uh, I mentioned what kind of, uh, I mentioned uh, on what kind of topics, uh, what kind of topics uh, I tried to, on what kind of topics I tried to wrote. For example, I mentioned gender inequality, human trafficking. So if you are, for example, so if you are, um, if you also write uh, if you also write articles or and so on, try to mention also your topics. Uh, try to show what kind of world issues attract you, uh, or in what kind of world issues you are most interested in. So I wrote gender inequality and human trafficking. And actually about gender inequality, uh, I talked in my personal essay about gender inequality. Um, I also wrote that uh, I was that uh, I had an that I read uh, that I wrote in Kazakh language. And this is also how I could, and by this I showed also how can I, um, how can I contribute to the diversity of Duke Kuntran University. Uh, the fact that I know Kazakh language that I can write on it, uh, it makes maybe me a unique that I can contribute. Uh, 
uh, to, the to, to, to the community of uh, Jikunshan University. Um, then uh, I wrote about that I was a teacher of school language courses at, at um, Nazarbayev Intellectual School of Astana, and it was also a school level uh, project. Uh, and uh, I wrote that I taught uh, to three foreign school teachers uh, up to elementary the Kazakh and Russian languages. So um, I concentrated on speaking, reading, and writing abilities of these teachers. And you see, this is um, this activity also shows my personal quality that um, I can that um, I can be uh, I can have empathy that I am one of those people who can work, who can contribute uh, to the community's wellness. Uh, yes, and. Um, this was uh, a school level project and as you see only my first two um, activities they were uh, they were outside of the school and all other actually um, on, and all other actually uh, activities they were on school level so you can in activities you can write uh, on school level on national level on, on on the level that you want but this activity it must show that you made some impact that you have done something really meaningful uh, for community for yourself that it must you, you activities it's a good place to show your interest to show how multi-sided person you are that's why I try in my activities I try to write uh, some uh, various things um, Sorry, Ms. Roshan, do we need to stop on each activity? Is it important to tell her about every um, activity? I think I think we don't need to stop on each activity because people mm -hmm. can, uh, mm -hmm. it's like a great thing about our students, they can read. Uh, guys, do you have any questions? Also, uh, one thing, yeah. for example, uh, you see that here is a robotics participant STEM program in robotics. So, um, in internet, you can find uh, some kind of um, some kind of such STEM programs that you can go uh, that you can learn by yourself, and you can get actually a certificate for that. And you can mention that in Common App. So that's why just do research in internet and find some projects that you can uh, do it, and some kind of STEM programs that you can have. So, yeah, it's really important to make one step further and kind of like try to find information on your own uh, because U.S. universities, they are really looking for students who are responsible for themselves and who can take ownership uh, of their projects and who can initiate because they do not really have enough staff and time to take care mm -hmm. of a single student, right? Uh, guys, just make sure that I just sent you a list of uh, verbs that you can use to uh, fill out this application file. Uh, plus, it's really important to uh, take a note and um, really think about your own uh, contribution, your value, what kind of value uh, you can give to the university where you're applying. Um, you can see that you don't have much space. So uh, you have about one line for uh, role and organization name, which is like on top, and you have 150 characters for the description part. Mm -hmm. And you will kind of like read through, you will really see how uh, wisely Isana used that space. Like, ever, like you have never met her in your life, but you can actually uh, know what she was doing all those years. Uh, do you have any questions? It's your to time to ask. Mm -hmm. To I show don't that you're a multi-sided person, that you have some impact. It, it must not be on global level. It can be on school level, but show that impact. Activities yeah. are done for them. Is for this. Yeah, like you're showing that you can get knowledge and you're showing that you ca you can actually give this knowledge back like you can share and you are willing to contribute because U.S. universities, they cannot predict, right, what you're going to do in the university. Uh, all they can do is they will look at those activities you have done before and they will make an assessment 
And based on that, they will be able to predict if you're going to be active, if you're going to uh, feel good on their campus. It's also really important. Okay, I think we have no questions. Mm -hmm. Maybe, okay. oh, yeah, uh, that was my mistake. It was uh, blocked. Okay, guys, now you can <laughs> send questions. One more point, also volunteering. As you see, uh, in activities, I also wrote about volunteering. So that's why you also volunteer if you have time, opportunity, and you can volunteer in some uh, great uh, conferences. For example, I wrote primary healthcare conference, which was a global conference actually. And you can volunteer in such great conferences so that you will be able um, to write this in Common App, your, in your Common App. So volunteering is one of the good options actually. Yeah. What kind of financial aid you got? Um, okay, Duke Roshan University it, uh, offers as a maximum uh, the full tuition scholarship. They don't offer uh, more than that. And I got full tuition. That's why maximum grant. Yes. Guys, any questions regarding activities section? Also, actually, about scholarship, Duke Roshan University uh, it offers merit-based scholarship basing on your achievements and financial aid. I got full financial aid uh, and mm. you don't need to apply to, you don't need to write more any other essays in order to apply to merit-based scholarship. You are automatically considered to it if you apply to the university. Um, is it necessary to fill 150 words while describing activities? It's not 150 words, it's 100, 150 characters. 150 mm знаков. -hmm. Really short. That's it's like lines. Too short. Yeah, it's difficult, right? To uh, yes. describe activity in just two lines. It's extremely difficult. Uh, you when see, I did write uh, sentences. I wrote with my um, torture. Yeah, like bullet points. Uh, when did you start filling out Common App? Uh, I guess in September I started. I actually applied for regular decision. I didn't apply to any university um, as an early decision. So I started feeling common up at sept at September, in September. Yeah, you can start earlier, right? Yeah. Uh, when is financial aid enough to cover all expenses? Uh, it covers only your tuition. It doesn't cover your meal plan, uh, your ac accommodation, um, and everything. So you got a tuition, you got a financial aid only for uh, only for your lessons, only for your studying. So that you need to pay for your meal by yourself, for your academ academation by yourself. So, yeah, is it possible to apply uh, for a primary healthcare conference now? Um, I don't know, uh, like, I mean, uh, I don't know whether a global conference on primary health care will be uh, conducted this year, but if you are a part of, but if you are a member of a volunteer club, you'll, you'll have different, um, you'll have, you can choose from different events that are going through, like that are uh, held in our city. You can go to some better conferences and so on. Yeah, just guys, please, you know, like, uh, make sure that um, you really understand that it's your responsibility to look for opportunities. So just Google, okay? Uh, what is the rating of your university, world ranking? Have you checked that information? Uh, global ranking? Yeah. Well, I actually check, checked because Duke Munchan University, it's new university, um, its global ranking uh, is 300 out of in the world 300s around the it's, 300s it's, it's still great because um there are 4500 universities only in the united states so uh -huh. to 100 in the world is actually really good how much um, money do you need for a student uh how much money do you need to cover all other expenses except for tuition fee uh-huh 
Well, um, I calculated it for myself and um, I calculated it at minimum boundaries. So that's why you need for one year, $9,000 at least. Yeah. $9,000, it will cover your travel, your meal, your uh, accommodation. Um, uh, if you want to go, if you want to go out, then you need maybe a bit more, for example, $10,000, $12,000, and so on. But most students who live in Almaty or Astana, your parents, um, like being really honest and realistic, your parents actually spend that money on you. Um, okay, any other questions? Right now we have these activities and we have honors and we wanna see questions regarding activities and honors. Guys, it's really important. I had amazing students. And you know, like when I went through their applications, actually after they applied and I saw how they were filling out all this information, I was shocked. I had one student and I still see him as like a superstar. And somehow that kid managed to skip the honors section like completely. He didn't put even a word in that section and I was about to kill him. <laughs> I still mad at him. It was three years ago and I'm still mad at him. Should we mention activities that we did in five, six, seven? No, no, you, if you have 11 years in school, then it's eight, nine, 10, 11. If you have 12 years in school, then it's nine, 10, 11, 12. I think we're good. We have no questions left. Let's move on. Okay. So now we come to personal essay. And um, I need to read it, yes? Fully. Uh, yeah, let's read it because some students mm -hmm. uh, use phones and so on. Okay. One evening I noticed that my mom's hands were hard and closed, blue, car blue corded with multiple veins which concealed her fragile nature exposed to the hard trend science of being. The silence was interrupted by her four words, don't leave like me. As a six year old girl, I didn't understand this, but over time I began to see what she meant. The maternal line of my family has always been victim of gender inequality. Great grandfather harshly limited my grandmother's secondary education by stating that a book is not a girl's property. Her thirst for knowledge was left unsatisfied, but this sequence of events didn't help when it came to my mom. High school gave credentials to shallow sons, but refused to give a diploma to a diligent student as my mom, disparaging her for being a girl. Then my mom had to reject a job offer from the National Bank and become a housewife to do harsh physical work to please her in-laws. Her long journey by the winding path with trail of blood and sweet since her childhood until present day is seen in her hands. Gender inequality stole a feature of my mom and grandma. Their daily regrets gave me bravery to speak against, to speak out against the social unfairness. I promised, I promised to get a quality higher education and become a surgeon, which has never been considered as a woman's job in my country. At nine, I made the first step toward my dream. I wrote a doctor's diary based on my childhood dream about curing terminal patients. In my diary, I wrote how I imagined invented, inventing new pharmaceutical drugs to treat various illnesses. It was this step that gave my mom a light of hope and seemed to glow incessantly in my assiduity, assiduity accompanied by sleepless nights at school. While the majority of the students from my school chose literature and human sciences, keeping my promise I chose the biology to work on my research. The precise topic of my research was the effect of aging on memory and cognitive functions of, human, of, humans, on, of humans. In this research, I checked the short-term memory, working memory and cognitive functions of five age groups by using tests with high test, high test re 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 reliability. The stop signal tasks and choice reaction tasks were designed to evaluate cognitive functions where scientific tools such as backward digits fan task and word serial recall serve to estimate the working memory capacity and short-term memory capacity respectively. 
This investigation helped me not only to understand the impact of aging, but to show myself that I can solve complicated scientific problems. The next step that strengthened my commitment to becoming a surgeon was a volunteering experience at the hospital. There, I mainly did paperwork, like registering patients and finding their records. While performing my responsibilities, I met parents that didn't give consent for the operation to be done only because the operating surgeon was a woman. Even though he needed an urgent care, family chose to leave him in agonizing pain. Looking at child, I understand that he was a defenseless victim of social prejudice. The feelings of empathy and sorrow brought by this injustice encouraged me to stay confident in my choice of career. The injustice that I used to see my whole life ruined, ruined, the, lives of, ruined the lives of many on grand scale. Destructive, destructive barriers of gender inequality that limit the growth of human sorry that limit the growth of human potential is the battleground where I chose to be a brave soldier. But I understand that this is not the only battleground that needs warriors. Choosing to pursue medicine meant fighting on the front line of one of the crucial battlefields of human. I believe that one day indisputable benefits of my education will help me to acquire the true art of doctor's hand, which gives a beautiful shape to patient's life. That day, I will take the wrinkled hand of my mom, smile, and say that I fulfilled her wish. Well, um, as you see, first of all, uh, I want to, uh, while talking about personal essay, uh, there are seven prompts. And I chose the seventh prompt, which, uh, which tells, share an essay on your topic, on your choice. Uh, and you can choose this prompt if you are not sure which one you want to choose. Like, uh, I chose the seventh one. Uh, and while starting, while starting writing my personal essay, first of all, you need to brainstorm. And I brainstormed a lot, and uh, I wanted to choose a topic that will link to my profession uh, and that will be a really meaningful, uh, influential, and significant topic uh, for uh, our century. So I chose gender inequality, and as you see, it's one of the uh, meaningful topics. It's, it's one of the crucial topics for our century. And, uh, I thought that it will, is, this topic will be really good. And then, um, that's why I think carefully uh, about your topic because it will influence to your whole essay. Uh, then, um, as you see, uh, in the second paragraph, um, in the second paragraph, um, I started talking about my mom, uh, about the experience. So this essay, actually, it must be about yourself. It must not be about someone or something. Uh, you need to show how this someone, how someone, how something impacts to you. So showing impact is one of the, um, is one of the crucial parts of uh, in a personal essay. Don't write about someone, show how someone influenced you. And actually in my first draft, to be honest, um, I had a story about my mom for uh, half, for the for the whole half of my essay. Then um, I tried to shorten it. And as you see now, it's one third of the whole essay. So that's why uh, always remember that personal essay is, is a self-reflection. Uh, it's how you, it's how you uh, demonstrate your, it's how you demonstrate the impact of experience in, on yourself. Uh, you need to show the personal growth in a personal essay. Uh, or um, I guess it's uh, one of the, um, Yes, it's one of the main points of the personal essay is to show your personal growth. Uh, and in this case, uh, you see that in the second paragraph, I get such line as, their daily regrets gave me bravery to speak out against the social unfairness. I promised to get a quality higher education and become a surgeon, which has never been considered as a woman's job in my country. In these two sentences, I showed how I reflected uh, on the experience of my mom on the experience of my grand uh, of my on the experience of my grandmother, I showed um, so in this uh, two sentences I linked both the gender inequality topic, the pro my profession, surgery, surgeon, uh, and how they how this experience has impacted on me. That's why this was like a, one of the key sentences uh, in my essay. Uh, and also uh, let's talk about um, personal qualities. While writing a personal essay, I really suggest you. So you choose, for example, your topic. You can uh, you can write about your profession or not. It's your choice. Uh, but in my case, uh, but always in your personal essay, you need to show some personal qualities. 
I tried to choose uh, three personal qualities that link, to, that link to both my topic and to the profession. And they were, as you see, empathy and sorrow. For example, in one, two, three, four, in fifth paragraph, uh, at last sentence of, uh, in, in last sentence of fifth paragraph, I wrote the feelings of empathy and sorrow. sorrow. This is so, Yes, this is one of the basic um, personal qualities of um, uh, that that of personal qualities of doctors. Actually, um, it's great. Actually, if you have not basic but some extraordinary, maybe some interesting personal qualities. But I still wrote uh, empathy because I found it really important. Um, that's why even if it was uh, basic, I wrote about it. Uh, this was one of my personal qualities. Second a personal quality that they wanted to show it was perseverance. Um, like you see that I have I had perseverance uh, while um, I wrote it about my investigation. For example, um, in fourth paragraph I wrote, uh, but to show myself that they can solve complicated scientific problems. Um, this is uh, one of the qualities they wanted to show perseverance. And third quality that uh, personal quality that uh, I wanted to show it was bravery. Well. Um, I, I think that bravery, it was a good personal quality. It was, it was not that basic. Um, bravery, actually, when we talk about doctors, uh, it's sometimes overlooked. And uh, we don't always mention uh, about the bravery. And I chose bravery for myself because I showed, uh, because in my essay, I stated that I had the bravery to speak, to speak uh, against uh, gender inequality and bravery in order to fight uh, in the front line uh, as a surgeon. So you see that, um, uh, bravery is one of the personal qualities that I wanted to show. And coming to the language, uh, as you see, that language uh, is a bit complicated. Um, I personally suggest to write uh, personal essays like with the language that you feel comfortable with, because um, actually it gives vibe. Actually, it gives uh, your personal vibe. Yeah, it talks. It tells a lot about you. Uh, and in my case, I wrote it. Yes, uh, I admit that I wrote it with complicated words. Um, and if you want uh, to find some good verbs uh, and to find some good synonyms, or you can use um, thesaurus.com, which I uh, mentioned uh, at the right. Yes, thesaurus.com. If you see in the slide, uh, and. Also, I tried to use some techniques. Uh, you see that I'm uh, trying, uh, I tried to use contrast. Uh, for example, while the majority of the students from my school chose literature and human sciences, keeping my promise, I chose the biology to work on my research. I think that such uh, contrast, such kind of uh, contrasts, they are really good. That's why I tried to use them. Uh, also, um, as one of the techniques, I also used like um, I linked the introduction and conclusion. You can see that I started talking about my mom's hands, and um, I ended talking like that. I will that someday I will take her, I will take her ringlet hand, that I will smile uh, and say that I fulfilled her wish. So this can be one of the techniques that you can also use, for example, to connect your introduction and um, and conclusion. Uh, and also about timing. Start writing your personal essays now if you are applying uh, this year. If you are applying this year. It takes, uh, for example, for me, it took a month to edit. Uh, but I know that some some of some of my friends, some of my acquaintances, they edited their essays for like three, four months. That's why wrote, write your personal essay now and um, try to finish it before uh, the school year starts. And personal essay, actually, it's, yeah, it's personal. So try to show uh, some kind of experience, something important, that something that uh, describes you very well. Maybe we need to stop this and have some questions. Yeah, let's uh, just stop right here and uh, let people ask questions. Did anyone help you to write it or did you write it by yourself? Uh, I wrote it by yourself, but uh, as you know that by I myself, went to, <laughs> <laughs> I went to I went to Education USA and they helped me to edit this edit edit this essay. Yes, that's why I had a help. Mm. Uh, no, I was actually joking because you said um, uh, I wrote it by yourself. <laughs> I was like, yeah, sure. Uh, and plus, um, you used help of your um, classmates. Uh, of your peers, which is also mm. good. You know, someone like, let's say me, I'm not um, 
really close to Aisana, so sometimes I cannot even say if this essay reflects her personality. And uh, if you have peers who are ready to help you and who know your personality, they can also read it and they can tell you if it's you or it's not you. So mm -hmm. that, that can be also helpful. Uh, someone is saying that this is a great essay. I absolutely agree. Any questions on the essay? Oh, actually, one more thing. You see on the yeah. right, on the slide, we, I mentioned 50 successful Ivy League essays and um, also one book. I mean, these two books, I use them uh, in order to understand how to write personal essays. Uh, and if you will write me, I, I can send them if you want. So I use these two books in order to write, uh, especially the, um, the author, okay. Ethan, he wrote good, uh, in a book, in a college essay credentials, he mentioned about personal qualities. And uh, by reading his book, I also tried to mention, I also tried to distinguish my personal qualities in this essay. Yeah. So our resources uh, in one of his uh, presentations, he says that key components of a good essay is vulnerability, is passion, core values, and craft. Mm -hmm. So it's really important uh, not to be afraid to be vulnerable because mm -hmm. uh, you're showing your vulnerability, you're actually um, opening up and um, admissions uh, officers, they will uh, get to know you. So you're really showing your character. Uh, plus it's good, like it usually works really well when you connect it with your um, major, what you want to do in life. And what I like about this essay is that uh, you read this essay and you can see how it connects really well to honors and um, activities. So like uh, here she has like, she has empathy and sorrow. And at the same time, if we go back to, to activities, we will see uh, how much she volunteered and that she took care of elderly. Uh, she helped people, she was trying to raise money for charities. Um, like if your future profession is somehow connected to helping people, it's good to have this in your uh, application file, this information that you are actually the, the one who is ready to help. Guys, if you have any questions, please ask them now. Ask them now or never, come on. And plus, I love how um, you showed this, um, your thesis statement at the end of the second paragraph. It was really good. Uh, and I really like this uh, wrap up uh, conclusion, like no new ideas and um, you're still doing um, how it's called tribute to your mother. But at the same time, we mostly see you and your future ideas. Uh, Yulia has a question. Did you have several ideas or you had the only one from the beginning? For, for what? Uh, for personal essay? Yeah. Yeah, um, actually, no, I had, um, I didn't have several, uh, several uh, different essays. I had only one draft and I worked on this draft for a month. But uh, before writing this draft, uh, I thought a lot. Um, I thought about different like other prompts. Maybe uh, I need to chose another prompt. Maybe I need to write maybe about my dad or so that's why, yeah, I had uh, different ideas before, but um, I didn't write different essays. I wrote, I wrote a first draft of this essay and I edited it. Yeah, that's good. But still brainstormed. It's really important yes. to brainstorm because uh, brainstorming is key. It's better to spend several mm -hmm. brainstorming and then just sit and write rather than you write something, you don't like it, then you write something else and you don't like it. So it's good to brainstorm. Brainstorming is key when you're filling out your common app, when you're filling out your honors, you have to brainstorm. Uh, you're filling out your um, activities, you have to brainstorm. Um, any questions? Please ask them. 
this is a, like a really well crafted essay. And I like how uh, we have mostly Aisana in this essay, not her mom, not her grand great grandfather or any other people. No questions, really? Um, do you have any uh, supplemental essays to show? Yes, I have one essay. Yeah, let's just go to that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's move to university specific essay. Uh, DKU, this is um, the requested essay and you need to write it. Um, question is, why good match? What special qualities could you bring? As you see in my whole coming up, uh, I made a great emphasis on research. And in, this, uh, and in this essay, I also tried to make an emphasis on research. And you see the question, it doesn't, um, it doesn't ask you why Duke Shan University. It asks you why good match? What special qualities? So that's why in this essay, you primarily make a link between yourself, between your experience and your knowledge, and, be and between what Duke Kunshan University, uh, University offers to its students. That's why in this whole essay, um, I made uh, a link every time. Uh, let's read it first. China is actively growing in fields of health uh, and light industry. I predict the transfer of their economy to Kazakhstan, including the medical field in consequent 30 years because of good cooperation and proximate geographical locations. I want to be a link in this transformation, and this was the main reason for choosing DKU. I love combining different things to invent something beneficial. In Group 4 project, uh, which, I, which I mentioned in activities. Um, our team applied robotics, chemistry, and biology to make paper from fallen leaves. I think signature work, uh, which is a project that you need to submit at the four years of studying at Duke Kunshan University, uh, I think signature work project could help me to extend preliminary experience of using interdisciplinary curriculum on a bigger scale because Kazakhstan is in second place among European countries on mortality from cardiovascular diseases. I want to investigate the effect of smoking on occurrence of ischemic heart stroke in rural regions for its signature work project. I would especially appreciate working with Dr. Chinkai Wu in Global Health Research Center. The absence of academic research in Kazakhstan on heart stroke in rural regions and, and plethora of research findings by, CIMA, by CINEMA study did in stroke belt of China pushes me even more to study research question in DKU. Now, I started to collect different articles regarding the research question. As a DKU student, I want to bring the exploration beyond the boundaries and diversity to my classmates. I plan to present my future research at the conference, such as achieving universal health care in China and globally. And of course, the DKU for me is not only excellence in research, but also diversity. I know that DKU students send students the DKU sends students to partner universities to maintain global student body. Specific, specifically, as part of Duke approved programs, I want to study at King's College of London. The open-mindedness the open -mindedness and approach with what university comes to raise global citizens made me confident about my choice of, about my choice of university. So you see, um, this is university-specific essay. And from let's start from uh, introduction. You see that um, I always try to answer the question, the question why good match? And in, and in the first paragraph, I mentioned Kazakhstan, which is my place of origin, and I mentioned China, um, is uh, where the Duke Kunshan University is located. And by saying that I want to be a link in this transformation, I actually showed that I want to make uh, an impact on both global and local levels. As I said before, one of the um, as I said before, Duke Kunshan University, it looks for candidates who can make an impact and uh, on both on local and global levels. And this is and this uh, sentence, uh, the last sentence of the first paragraph, I want to be linked in this transformation. And this was the main reason, reason for choosing DKU. This, is, this was actually like an opening statement uh, where I showed that um, I'm here to make an impact. I'm here, uh, I'm here uh, to have some influence. In second paragraph, uh, you see that uh, the first line, you see first sentence, I love combining different things to invent something beneficial. So this is how, this is how I, um, this is how I'm going to make an impact. And by this sentence, I showed how uh, I want to, uh, how I want to do something beneficial for Duke Kunshan University. And further uh, in this paragraph, I mentioned about Guffer project. Uh, so by this, by mentioning about this project, 
I actually showed that I made already something on a school level, but then mentioning, mentioning uh, the signature work, uh, which is a project that you need to pass at um, DKU, I mentioned that I want to extend my preliminary experience to the um, on a bigger scale. You see that um, from school level to university level, and by stating uh, about the, uh, my research projects, um, the topic of my research project, uh, I showed that actually this is uh, this project is going to be like a more on a global level. Uh, so this is how we race from school level to global level. And yes, um, I also um, I also recommend you to mention uh, names of doctors. Uh, for example, I mentioned Dr. Chin Kai Wu. She works in Duke Chan University, and her research has actually attracted me. And I also mentioned the Global Health Research Center, which was which is also one of the research centers of Duke Chan University. So in your university specific essays, always try to address some parts of university. You can write names of professors, be specific. Uh, and as you see in next insert paragraph, when I talk about cinema study, I strengthen my position. For example, um, I talk that in this third paragraph, I answered to the question, why exactly at DKU, why exactly in China, I want to do this research. I say that uh, cinema study, it was like a, a role model um, project for me. And by looking that this project was held in China with help of D DKU, uh, by looking to the results um, of, this, of this project, I understand that I personally, I also can come and do such project and also have such great results. So third paragraph, it was in order to strengthen um, my position and to answer why at DKU exactly I want to do this. And fourth paragraph, uh, in fourth paragraph, I made in conclusion. For example, you see, as a DKU student, I want to bring the exploration beyond the boundaries and diversity. So what special qualities here? I fulfill, uh, here I fully answered to the question, what special qualities? So diversity and exploration beyond the boundaries. This is what I want to uh, offer to Duke Chan University. And again, and again, I'm mentioning specifically uh, at, which, at, at which conference I want to uh, represent, to present my research. Uh, I, this, actually, this conference, it, it was held in DKU in last year, and um, it's held annually. Uh, that's why I wrote about this conference. So you see, uh, I always try to make a good match. I uh, made a good match. I made a match between from starting from Kazakhstan and China, then going to group for a project of signature work. Then I went to my own research project project on cardiovascular disease. Then I mentioned it. Then I uh, matched it with cinema study, and uh, you see that I'm trying to um, I'm trying to answer to this question. And um, then uh, in fifth and sixth and in fifth and the last paragraph, I talk about the diversity. How can I contribute to it? What can I bring? Uh, and the last sentence, uh, which is about, I hope that um, the open-mindedness and approach with what the university comes to raise global citizens made me confident about my choice of your university. It was like a conclusion sentence. And um, so in your essays, try to uh, also make such conclusion, not such conclusion, I mean, try to uh, summarize your, um, your, um, your thoughts and also uh, while uh, writing university specific essay actually i made a first uh, research of the dku and uh, while looking through their website through the um, research universe i understand that they emphasize always the word for example global citizens they emphasize the word such as transformation yes and you see uh, i also tried to use these words if you are writing university specific essay, try to see these words in the website of the university and try to use them in your, um, in your, specific, in your essay. Do we need to stop here? Um, yeah, let's just stop here. And um, I actually really love your second paragraph. Um, first of all, um, maybe you know it, maybe you don't. But um, Duke Kunshan University is one of the universities which really values like um, ecology, sustainability, and I think they have some sort of like green campus. Uh, I'm not sure, not a word, but some, some sort of like, uh, they're considered to be one of the greenest campuses in China. Uh, so like your sentence about like making paper from fallen leaves, I was like, oh, you know, this matches uh, some of the 
are like core values of the university. Plus, I really loved how you connected your project team, how you really showed that you're ready for interdisciplinary education. Very cool. It is like really well connected. And uh, cool. this is one of the best, uh, probably, why us essays. It's like really, really nicely written. Um, someone is asking, uh, what other universities did you get accepted to? Um, I applied uh, to also Jacobs, yeah, Jacobs University, which is in Germany, mm -hmm. and I was accepted also to another bike university. Mm -hmm. That's good. Guys, any questions regarding this type of essay? This is an important essay. It's usually called as Why Us essay, and students make so many mistakes. Uh, many students, what they do, they will just uh, write one template and they will try to match it to uh, like every other university where they're applying. And sometimes it's not working. Sometimes it does work, but not always. Uh, so it's really important to do research. Uh, all of this information from, have you taken all the information from the university website or you uh, checked information in some other sources? Uh, yes, uh, actually, I got all this information from website. Actually, read all things on the website. Read news. Read um, every like every page of the website so that you will get clear, um, clear, uh, clear picture of the university. I actually, I, I probably didn't uh, didn't uh, talk to anyone, didn't talk to anyone from DKU before applying to it. So uh, I made the research from the university's website. Look also to Instagram of the university. Yes. Uh, but you see how important it is to um, really um, try and to find something that matches your, um, your not expectations, but your plans and what you want to do and what you are personally interested in. Because uh, almost every single student writes something about uh, interdisciplinary uh, curriculum, almost everyone. But it's important to show why this is important for you personally. Uh, someone is asking, what about waitlist? Have you been waitlisted anywhere in any university? No. Um, actually, uh, I applied to Ivy League universities, but I was rejected. Mm -hmm. I applied to only Ivy League universities. Then after Ivy League universities, I applied to Duke Kunshan University, to uh, Jacobs University, and to Nazarbayev University. So that's all. That's all universities to where we applied actually. Um, I think one of the problems was that um, you didn't have much time because uh, the last year at NISAB is extremely difficult they have yes, actually timing just, is really important this yeah. is what I, this is about what i'm planning to talk uh, in the last page of our presentation yeah timing. because sab um doesn't make it easy for students mm -hmm. here this is one of the most yes. difficult ones and students are uh, like running basically <laughs> and they have no idea what to do and plus, you have to take all the tests, right? In October and December, or you took them earlier. Uh, SAT? Yeah. Yes, SAT I took in November. And in January, mm -hmm. um, I passed my application. Also, yeah. I took IELTS in November. <laughs> you yeah, see so that everything was uh, like during my 12th grade. Yeah, it was difficult. OK, mm -hmm. let's move on mm -hmm. to the final um, page. Final slide. Oh, okay. Uh, finally, uh, when I apply, when after sending my common app to uh, Duke Kunshan University, I actually got an invitation for the interview, and uh, you had a, you have a you have a chance to either to accept it or not to accept it, but accept it. So that um, it's an opportunity uh, for um, for you for you to know about the university better and for the university admissions to know about. You to know about you better. 
uh, during the, I had an interview with Russell Davis. He's a global director of, uh, he's a director of global student recruitment. Uh, and I got such questions as, why do you control university? I think that we will go through questions just. Um, he asked me firstly, why do you control university? And I answered. Then he asked me this kind of question, interesting question. How would your parents react if you would apply to the university during the coronavirus pandemic? And I told the truth. Um, I told that um, my parents would be, um, uh, would support me, but still maybe they would have some questions. Uh, then the third question was, what kind of soft skills do you use to facilitate team collaboration? Um, uh, well, uh, and before going to interview, read about soft skills. Read what is soft skills. Um, I, uh, he actually, he explained to me first, firstly, what are the soft skills? And because of his explanation, uh, I could uh, answer to this question. Uh, and the fourth question was, what would you like to leave behind yourself in the university? Think about all, uh, this also. Fifth question that he asked was, why diversity is important for solving problems? Uh, and the sixth question was, what kind of problems did you face while doing, uh, he chose some activity, uh, Nisa's Got Talents, he chose this activity and uh, he asked, what kind of problems did I met, did I meet and how did I solve, how did I solve it? Uh, these were all the questions. Um, so you want to maybe talk about interview more if you want. Um, it lasted for um, 15, for actually, it lasted for 25 minutes. And uh, while uh, going to the interview, well, be confident, yes, and be uh, open-minded. Uh, show that you are a multi-sided person. So just show that it's comfort. Show that you, um, it's comfortable for uh, to actually uh, to communicate with you. Um, also, don't has also after the interview, uh, he um, asked me whether I have the questions. And exactly when he asks you something like that, say that you have questions and prepare these questions before your interview. Like I, I prepared actually, I prepared actually for interview uh, two three days. I uh, again, I again made a research on DK even more deeper. Um, I wrote the possible questions and I wrote answers for them. Uh, I just memorized. Uh, the questions that I want to ask uh, after, as the interview will um, will end, and um, I got prepared, and I really prepared for the interview. Don't miss this opportunity to tell about yourself more, uh, to show that you are the one student that you are uh, the one student who must be accepted. That's why um, came with some seriousness to the interview. Maybe you have some questions about the interview. Um, okay. Did you book the time for the interview or they emailed you an exact time? Uh, time, well, like, did I choose time or did they? I, I'm not really sure, but I think that uh, you, don't have to, uh, you don't have to request interview, right? No, they no, no. email you. Mm -hmm. They just send a letter. They sent uh, me, like, they, they gave me a choice. To, uh, like I had a calendar like they said what what kind of day do you want yeah but uh, some universities require uh, that students actually request uh, uh, inter in if you that, yeah they said they they should, in they do. yeah mm -hmm. but also. it's just different so do not try to check information I have to be honest I have one student who got admitted to the university with a full ride scholarship, not Duke Kunshan, but a different one. And that student didn't check her email. And the time when she actually found out that she got admitted, she was already late. And they were like, I'm sorry, now we have to reject you. Mm. So make sure can you imagine she got admitted to the united states with a full ride scholarship and she didn't check her email i was about to kill her i was just like i really wanted to uh to kill her <laughs> how did you answer the question four question four uh what, what is, would you like to leave behind 
I actually don't remember how I answered, how I answered, but uh, I guess I said uh, about, I said about, again, I guess about the diversity that, uh, and I also stated that because Duke Chuan University, it's new university, actually, yeah, that's the point, because um, Duke Chuan University is a new university, um, it's, it's your turn to build this university. You, you have a various uh, like uh, opportunities to build this university from zero starting from the bottom. And uh, also, I mentioned this, yes, I remember. And this is good. Uh, uh, I told, yeah, I remember. I also told that I want to be ambassador, uh, that mm. I want to, um, to, that I want to be ambassador in this university and to talk about this university to the um, perspective, to the perspective uh, high school uh, students and, um, or not. Maybe um, oh, yeah. we can do that. I can email to Russell. <laughs> <laughs> I really That's don't actually remember. Possible. But um, you, like, guys, right now um, it's difficult to recall answers, but mm -hmm. uh, you should not recall answers of Isana. You should have your own answers. You should have your own answers built basically based on your own experiences. But sure, uh, keep in mind that Duke Kunshan, um, it's really young, but if we're talking about the alumni community, you're actually talking about the alumni community, not just of Duke Kunshan, but of uh, Duke University. Mm. And a really nice collaborative community. And mm -hmm. Isana, uh, when she graduates, she can easily send an email to almost anyone who graduated from that university. And it's highly likely that she will get uh, an answer back and that she will get uh, necessary help. So this is one really good thing about having uh, a university with a good alumni community. So like, this is what they're proud of and i'm kind of like mm -hmm. giving tips also guys any questions regarding the interview and you know like during interviews you can feel uh, like you can be a bit nervous so um it's okay to stop i had students who were like uh trying to recall names of some tv series and they couldn't recall and they were like hold on let me google and they, they just went and they just Google. And you know, it's okay. If you cannot remember the name of something, it's okay if you just take a break. Or uh, another tip was like, uh, just pretend that you need to drink water and uh, start drinking water. And uh, while drinking water, just think about a possible answer. That was actually a tip from Russell. <laughs> he was like, you know, just start drinking your water. <laughs> and we'll wait. <laughs> it was oh, nice. No. Uh, no, so but, in, uh, uh -huh. do you know Chinese? Do you speak Chinese? No. Um, you have first two years uh, of uh, all four years of studying. You have an opportunity to learn Chinese language. And there are also um, such centers as writing, uh, writing a language, writing and speaking language center uh, in Duke Chan University. It's the center where you can have uh, some uh, lessons where you can uh, where you can ask for help. So that uh, this center helps you with your Chinese. Um, also, uh, there is also one more center which helps you to um, to study better. Like I, I don't know personally Chinese language, but uh, I want to learn it uh, during the university. Yeah, it's actually a great opportunity. Uh, it's always good to know another language except for English language. Uh, so like studying at American colleges, but not in the United States can be also a really good opportunity for you. Uh, one person is asking, uh, can you send books that you used to write your yeah, essay? Yeah, sure. Um, um, how do they contact you? Who? Ah, here. The student. Uh, because, well, yeah. actually, uh, my Instagram, you see, Bonito21. You can email me if you want. 
or there's my phone number. Actually, I'm also thinking of um, giving some SAT, SAT reasoning math, uh, math lessons. So if you want, if you have some problems with SAT math, or if you want uh, to make your math better, just contact me. You can ask me uh, actually about anything. Yeah, uh, guys, so um, I'm not gonna take a screenshot of this information. I'm not gonna share this information with you after. So if you're, please make sure that uh, you take a photo or screenshot and you uh, save this contact details. We will wait for several minutes. <laughs> so you just, uh, um, that's good. Someone has a question about SAT. Mm -hmm. Have a question about SAT, try to state your question about SAT. So we know your question about SAT. Uh, do you know Kazakhs who study there? Have uh, you met? In in Dukonshan University. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Um, but there are like really, there are only like, I don't know, three, four students from Kazakhstan. Yeah. Uh, I, Galia, uh -huh. Sultanat, and there is one student from Republic Physics and Math School, Aya or. Aya what? Kuchukova. Yeah, I think Aya, and maybe one more student, and that's it. They you sure you could be oh, from from 2000 from the class of 2023 there is also Asanali from um, from uh, uh, yeah. Mizun Norda from Norda and also yeah. Aida but I don't know where she yeah. is. so there are just um, several students so mm -hmm. uh, did you go to some centers or you prepared by yourself I all um, all where I well all where I go was the Education USA Center, uh, but mm, and here uh, I got good relatives. I'm really thankful for the center uh, because it helped me with my essay, with my um, personal essay. Uh, it uh, gave me some like directions and tips, and I, I'm really thankful. And Miss and Miss Roshan, I'm really thankful that you invited me to host this meeting. Uh, to talk about this university yes and i'm really thankful to you because this is actually one of the best presentations and it's so sad that uh many people missed it um someone is asking how did you prepare for sat you have a good score so you you definitely uh -huh. <laughs> well sat is all about how you study really really sat is was it was like I prepared for a whole month, really. Prepare it at least for a whole month. And I prepared with the books. Actually, I can write them in my um, here. For example, I can write these books or I can send them. Uh, I prepared by um, Erika Meltzer's uh, reading. Her reading techniques really helped me. And for math, I prepared only with College Board. So prepare with College Board. Uh, and for essay, I actually trained just by myself. And yes, and I prepared for a safety for a whole month. And I um, usually prepared for a day, like for two, three hours. Like during this yes. month, I prepared for two, three hours in a day. So at first, um, at, when I took the SAT for the first time, I didn't prepare and I got 1,300. Then I prepared for a month and I got 1,440. Yes, as you see. Mm -hmm. um, guys, please make sure that you understand that Aisana comes from NIS IB school. So they write so many essays. They write essays for every single subject they have in school. So mm -hmm. it's really important to know that. And so if, if she needed one month like of intensive, intensive uh, lessons, and she did it by herself. But her like initial level was rather high. So her like first score was 1300 without uh, like any preparation. So please make sure that you try to take a practice test. You really assess yourself. You see your level. And based on that, you you might need more time. 
how do you pay for your food and accommodation? <coughs> for your what? Food and accommodation. Uh, academic accommod accommodation. I will um, live in the campus, and uh, I still didn't prepare it actually uh, for the accommodation. Uh, and in case of food, yeah, I know that um, I actually have acquaintances uh, who studied in China, and they always say that for the foreign people, it's hard to adapt actually for the food. But Duke Chan University, um, in its meal, uh, you there is no meal plan, but actually, but uh, there are food from Western cuisine, from Eastern cuisine, from Chinese cuisine, and you can, um, there is no problem with the food in campus, but outside of campus in China, maybe you have some problems. Um, have you heard about any work opportunities? Uh, any work opportunities in Duke Chan University? Yeah. Uh, they gave, yes, they gave positions uh, for, you can um, have, you can become a lab assistant, but actually there is always a, like a competition for these places. Uh, you can be a lab assistant, uh, you can be, uh, you can work as an ambassador. Those who work as ambassadors, they also get paid. Um, also, uh, you can, you can, be, yes, you can be assistant of a professor. Yes, and these are the positions that I looked actually. Uh, but if you say about internships, then uh, Duke Chan University it helps like um, it uh, it invites good companies to the universities, and uh, so that you can actually um, communicate with the representatives of this com of these companies and have mm -hmm. some internship experience. So Duke wow. Chan University actually it also has center which helps you to um, to which checks your resume which can help you to prepare to the um, to the um, interview and so on it also has uh, this kind of uh, center uh, career center i think ah yes before. career center yeah. yes career center so that's good and um, we really need to send an email to russell i'm going to do it today Maybe you can be an ambassador. I think you're ready. Um, and someone is asking, um, what is about your last school year? You, uh, earlier, you mentioned that you're gonna tell about that. I think it's uh, about timing. About what? For timing, time, time. Ah, uh, timing. I mean, well, time. start doing, uh, I just wanted to tell that, start doing all your things now. Because uh, I'm not that organized person, I will be honest. I'm not that organized person, and I passed uh, the SAT in October, IELTS in November, and uh, also um, uh, and also simultaneously I wrote my all these essays. Well, I started started writing personal essay actually during the summer. I brainstormed and uh, I made uh, the idea what I will write, but still I wrote it during my school. Um, that's why. Start doing uh, all your things earlier, please. Do it earlier. The better you, the, the earlier you start, the the better your application will be. You can check, you can edit, and timing and, is really important. Yeah. Your mental health is so important. If you will start it doing now, then you will not suffer after. You know, under like <laughs> yeah, care yeah. about your mental health also. Uh, this is what I wanted to show. Yeah, that's true uh, because it's well, really um, to think about yourself, about your mental health. Uh, the last year is usually the most difficult one. Can you imagine like uh, taking all the tests, preparing for the tests, uh, writing all the essays, uh, doing research, talking to parents, requesting recommendation letters, uh, and all of that, it's just, and plus you have exams that you need to take. Plus IB program has this sort of like diploma paper or something like that. So um, they worry about many things. And I'm sure that in your schools, uh, the last year is not the easiest one, especially mm -hmm. in a national test or whatever. So um, yeah, it's like, it's such a difficult time for students and try to apply for early or early decision or early action uh, mm -hmm. that, this way you will be ready by what october 15th november 1st 
And even if you do not get admitted, it will be still earlier for you to apply by January 1st. You will have everything ready. Uh, you will need just to write some extra supplemental essays and that's it. So it's really good. And uh, do we have any students who have um, some time who will graduate in 2022 or 2023? If yes, then um, kind of like uh, brainstorm and write down what kind of honors you have, what kind of activities you already have in your list and think how you can deepen or broaden those activities, how you can really make your application stand out. Yesterday, I had an amazing individual consultation with one student. It was so much fun. That student was just like, okay, uh, sit back and enjoy the ride. I'm going to make a presentation about me. I was like, oh, really? <laughs> so I was just sitting and he was making a presentation about him. Um, he will graduate in 2022 and he already assessed everything he has at this point and he is planning uh, like he, he wrote down all the plans that he has for this year so uh, in this way oh. his application will be like really nice and it will mm -hmm. look good and solid uh, it, it's it's amazing that there are some students who start thinking earlier and they start preparing earlier Guys, any questions? We spent almost two hours, actually. Really? Yeah, it's 8.50. <laughs> yeah, really. Questions, please. And now you have um, Aisana's contact details. She can do mm -hmm. SAT math, right? Mm-hmm. And maybe you can even review their essays. Yes, reading it can be, yeah. Too. No questions? Really? Okay, Aisana, thank you a lot for this presentation. I will stop recording. Okay.